from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The South African Astronomical Observatory and the Department of Science and Technology last month launched the Meerlicht Optical Telescope at the observatory site in Sutherland, which will be the eye of the Meerkat Radio Telescope. Marlene Arnoldi tells us more. Meerlicht, meaning more light in Dutch, will simultaneously scan the southern skies together with Meerkat, creating a unique and world-first combination where astronomers will be studying stars and galaxies in two parts of the spectrum at the same time. SAAO director Professor Pietri Weissonen discusses why this telescope is unique. It's an optical telescope. As you see around here, all of these are optical or infrared telescopes. But the cool thing about this whole thing is that it, it works together with the radio telescope. You know, everybody's heard about the SKA. So Meerkat is a radio array a few hundred kilometers up north from here. And these two work together. And that's the thing which makes this totally and absolutely unique. Actually, in the whole global scale, nobody else in the whole world has something where we have a massive radio antenna. Uh, the meerkat, looking at space, studying space, and at exactly the same time, wherever meerkat is pointing, this telescope here behind us will be pointing at the same location. And the idea there is that if anything changes, there's a lot of things in, in the universe which happen, you know, things that go bump in the night, uh, which we don't always know what they are. And one wavelength, radio, sees it, Optical doesn't, but if one sees it and then you go and you know, I call up my friend and saying, hey guys, could you look at this with optical? It's too late. But now we simultaneously, all the time, at the same time, working at the same space. And that is unique. The Meerlicht comprises a 110 megapixel camera that captures a wide field of view, imaging faint objects within a minute to help scientists understand the nature of objects. One image is about 350 megabytes big. Meerlicht co-principal investigator and University of Cape Town professor Patrick Vogt explains how the camera functions. This is where the camera is housed at the back end and it creates a very flat focal plane of about 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and, and, and only in recent time can people actually build detectors that are that large. So there are two companies in the US that can build these big cameras, it's a bit like the camera on your cell phone, but then more sensitive and, and even larger. And, and this camera uh, contains 110 or 100 million, um, 110 million uh, pixels. And we can read it out in seven seconds. So it's very fast for these sort of cameras. So what we will do with this telescope is to make an image of the meerkat sky every minute and then read it out in seven seconds and then take another image and take another image. So we basically make a, a sequence of images, or like a movie almost, of what Meerkat is looking at, and we can study the variable stars and, and, and variable objects within those fields um, for, that, for that time. Using this telescope, scientists hope to understand transient activity better and accordingly with smaller time frames. Vote elaborates. Traditionally, the astronomers have, have, have characterized the transient universe on a range of time scales, from days to weeks to months to years. Um, but the time scale of things that vary below a day, below an hour, faster than an hour, is not very well understood yet. And, and this telescope will allow us to do that. These universal finds could help scientists answer the origin question, where we come from, and how, for example, minerals such as gold are formed. Meerlicht co-principal investigator and Radboud University professor Paul Groot comments. The, the main interest yeah. that, that Patrick and I share is in exploding stars in the, in the universe. Mm -hmm. So stars that get at the end of their lives or that have uh, basically like a thermonuclear bomb going off on their surfaces or stars that actually smash in together mm -hmm. uh, that creates a new star. And the unique thing about that is that these events all uh, last for a short period of time. So you really have to be there when the action is uh, showing up in the sky. And that can be a few hours, can be a day, can be a week. Um, and the nice thing about coupling this Meerlicht optical telescope to the Meerkat radio array is that that combination makes it possible to get as much information as we can uh, while the objects are still bright and then really understand what happened what happened in the, in, in the universe um, and also how does it connect up to us. For instance, the smashing into together of these two neutron stars, that creates gold. 
Mm. So all the gold that we have, and I mm. see a few rings and <laughs> earrings, and uh, all that gold was made in the smashing together of these neutron stars. Mm. And it's our curiosity that tells us, you know, how did it really happen? How mm. often does this happen? Uh, how does that uh, gold then end up in the earth later on? So it's a bit of a quest for a, a part of our origins question. Mm. Where do we come from? While we wait for new discoveries to be made, DST Director General Dr. Phil Mjwara speaks about what value this telescope, along with Meerkat, brings to South Africa. It brings value in the sense that this is an investment uh, in an optical telescope that we did not anticipate. Uh, but it's, it's an investment that is coming as a result of our investment in Carnarvon, as you know, uh, on the 64-dish uh, array, the radio telescope, because these scientists uh, from Netherlands and from the UK said for the first time you would be able, by just designing this telescope, the Meerlich telescope, to have an observing instrument that follows exactly what the radio telescope is doing. And they're telling us that for the first time in the world, uh, scientists and astronomers will have the opportunity to pick up if there are any discoveries that are being made by a radio telescope to follow up with an optical telescope. So I think in terms of scientific return, this is excellent news, not for our own scientists in South Africa, but for the global uh, group of astronomers. It's also a, a return on investment for us in South Africa because we've always seen investment in astronomy as something that will attract foreign direct investment in South Africa. Now from the engineering, but from the instruments that are going to be located in our reserve. This one, as I've said, is a, a partnership between South Africa, um, the UK and the Netherlands. Uh, in Carnarvon, uh, we have a HERA uh, instrument that is already putting an instrument there as a result of the investment that we made um, in uh, well, near cut telescope. So, and then the third investment is an investment for our young people who will now have access to these instruments, but most importantly, the large amounts of data that will be coming out of these instruments, and they will have an opportunity and the exposure uh, to analyze this data and make it a training of how you analyze large amounts of data. Of course, they will be trained in the astronomy uh, sort of experiments, but they could use that expertise in a range of other areas that require people with the expertise to uh, analyze large amounts of data. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.